Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the City of Madeira Beach Code Enforcement Hearing. My name is Bart Valdez, and I'm the appointed special magistrate to hear today's cases. I'm a practicing attorney and have been a member of the Florida Bar for over 20 years. I've been appointed to this position in accordance and with the authority set forth in Chapter 162, Florida Statutes. It is my role to fairly and objectively review the matters presented. As such, I would like to advise you of certain matters related to today's proceedings. Today's matters will be heard in the order that they appear on the agenda. Every effort will be made to hear all persons having relevant evidence, argument, or comments to offer related to the specific case that is being heard. If you wish to speak today, it is necessary that you be sworn in by the city attorney in just a few moments. In all cases, since the city has the burden of proof, the city will present its case first. The respondent or property owner then will be given the opportunity to refute the city's allegations. Formal rules of evidence do not apply to this proceeding. However, I will exert every effort to ensure that fundamental fairness is afforded to all parties. After hearing all relevant evidence, I will issue an order. The order will be reduced to writing, and you will be provided with a copy by mail. Therefore, please make sure that we have your current address. Additionally, you are advised that I do not have the authority in this hearing to grant you a variance, permit, or special exception of any kind. My role is solely to determine whether a city code has been violated and to provide you a reasonable time to correct the violation by whatever means is available to you. Please be advised that you may be subject to a fine and a lien may be recorded on your property if the violation is not corrected by the compliance deadline. If anyone wishes to present any information to me today, it is necessary that you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth. Therefore, at this point in time, the city attorney will go ahead and take the oath. Anyone that's going to speak today, if you can stand up, raise your right hand. I'm going to swear you under oath. You swear that the testimony you're about to give today is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. The first matter on the agenda is CE-24-0002 for the property located at 441 129th Avenue East. Is the city ready to proceed? We are. Go ahead, Mr. Trask. Okay, I, I would call uh, Deputy Snyder as our witness in this case. Deputy Snyder, if you could explain to um, the special magistrate your responsibilities here at the city of Madeira Beach. Uh, my name is Deputy Corey Snyder. I'm employed by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. I provide community policing service to the city of Madeira Beach. In that uh, job description, I uh, perform code enforcement for the city of Madeira Beach. I've been here since 2015 and code enforcement since 2017. Thank you. Are you familiar with the property at 441 129th Avenue East here in Madeira Beach? Yes, I am. Did you receive a complaint for a code violation at that property? Yes, I did. Okay, and what, what was the complaint that you received for that property? Uh, we received a complaint from a neighboring resident regarding short-term activity at the 441 uh, we have the, I have the complainant's name here in the case file that was given, let's see here, will be listed here. Case file, what am I seeing here? Page 15. All right. On January 2nd of 2024, we received a complaint from a J.D. Sullivan, uh, res nearby resident to the property of 441, reporting uh, weekend activity at the location. Okay. Did you determine um, who is the owner of this property? And if so, how did you determine that? Uh, through the Pinellas County Property Appraisers website and uh, the tax collector's website as well. Okay. If you would turn to page 3 of the packet and tell me if you recognize the three-page um, document there. Yes, this is the uh, printout of the Pinellas County Property Appraisers sheet for the address at 441 129th Avenue, listing the owner on file. Okay, can you tell us who the owner on file then is? The, the owner is uh, Gabriel DeCandido. Uh, it trust to D, D. Candido Gabriel and Patricia H. Trust uh, with a physical address at, at 12521 Frank Drive North in Seminole, Florida, 33776. 
Okay, and then the document that is pages six and seven, that's the tax collector printout showing the same owner of the same address? That is correct. Okay. When you went out to the property, um, tell us what you found out when you went to the property to do your inspection. And first of all, when did you do your inspection? Uh, the inspection was conducted on... Uh, 1-3 of 2024, I have video uh, from my body cam that uh, will assist with the uh, investigation into the short-term rental activity. We spoke with a woman that uh, reported she rented the property for approximately eight or nine days. Uh, the, how she obtained the property, what, uh, what service, what uh, internet service, and how much she paid. Okay. Can you play that for Yes. Special Magistrate. How long is this video approximately? About three minutes. Okay. I may have to reload the, the video here. Okay. There we go. Good morning. There you are. You're hiding. That's okay. I'm Deputy Snyder. This is Deputy Krieger. Hi, I'm Erin. Um, Erin, you... how are you? Look at your face. You got some gray hair there. Is that what that is? Twelve. Nice. Nice. I know. You could talk. You could talk. Yeah, I'm not scared. You've also your crotch. <laughs> That's all right. That's a... Nose right in there. Um, this used to be Debbie Weinstein's house, former commissioner, like two ago. Oh, really? You guys are. New, are you the owner or? No, we're renting. You're renting, we're, we're, okay. We're, we're, uh, we're here for a week from, her name was Lisa, Lisa. Lisa? Oh, yeah, just she, a week. Yeah, yeah. Oh. She she uh, bought it, I guess, in May. I looked it up, but we're, it's an Airbnb. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, up or down? Right here on the on the down the downside because there, I think there's there's, a, there's three units. There's three. That you're right. There's three. There's that side. There's yeah. 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 So we're on this bottom one, and then that one. The other two are empty. There was people over here for two days. Okay. They were actually from St. Louis. They were from Illinois. Okay. But yeah, we're just down here in this bottom one. But gotcha. Three total units. Okay. Okay. All yeah. right. But you have no association with the property. You're just here for how long? Are you guys staying? Until uh, we leave Saturday, eleven. When'd you get here? The week Friday. Or Friday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how much you paid? Just out of curiosity. Uh, well, twenty two hundred dollars. Okay. But Airbnb fees, it was like twenty eight hundred dollars. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Cleaning, cleaning fee. fees and taxes. Yeah. Oh. Holy cow! And it's been cold. I know. It's all right. We're from St. Louis. <laughs> it's though, so. warmer, I guess. But yeah. Okay. It's like it's like in the thirties at home. Okay. So. Very good. Yeah. All right. Why is there trouble? No, 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 no. Just we have, well, we do several. We do code enforcement. We check on properties that are for rent. Um, yeah. Yeah. We just, oh, we, we okay, go down yeah. the street. Yeah. I guess so. that's our rent. It, it, we went through Airbnb. Yeah. That's, that's close enough. It's, they consider it a short term rental. So, yeah, yeah. and some of the properties have restrictions, some don't. It just, you know, depends on the map. Yeah. And, we were here at nine. Oh, well, I guess it's considered nine days total. We got here. We actually got here a little bit early, and, and we paid for a little bit to check in Friday evening. Oh, okay. So, so we, we weren't sure how long it was going to take us to drive from. We drove from St. Louis oof, with the dogs. So, oof, yeah. yeah. Well, it's dog friendly. That's I know probably a rare thing too. Maybe it's more because of the pet fee. Did they? That's included in that twenty eight hundred dollars. Yeah, I think it was just included. Yeah. You, you just have to tell them how many dogs you have. We have two. They're both senior dogs, but we brought them down here to actually take them to. We used to camp over by Fort DeSoto, and they have a really big dog beach over there. Yeah. So we took them yeah. the other day. He was the only one that got in, so. 
He was yeah. freezing. We had to make him come out, but he loves the beach, and we're not sure how, you know, how many more years. I actually think the water is warmer than the air right That's now. That's what he and my husband said. Yeah. So, but yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, we're just staying here like a little over a week. So. Very cool. Yeah. You mind if you tell me your name? My name's Aaron. Max. Aaron. Yep. Okay, very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. Nice. Us too. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Deputy, once you received um, or completed that investigation, did you issue a notice of violation to the property owners? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, and when you issue the notice of violation, what were the cited violations? Uh, the cited violation was uh, R2 violations, code section 110-201. And were there any other code sections that you cited as well? Yes, I also uh, requested information from the business tax department uh, inquiring whether the property had a current business tax and whether if the property had a pre-rental inspection conducted also. Okay, so did you find out that there was no local business tax receipt issued for this property? That is correct. And did you also find out that this wasn't registered as a vacation rental within the city? That is correct also. Okay. So you cited them with 110-201, 62-33, and 34-503 of the code? That is correct. When you issued your notice of violation, did you do that in writing? Yes, I did. It is that the document that is on pages 8 and 9 of the packet? Yes, it is. All right. And in that, um, did you ask that they cease the use of the short-term uh, rental as soon as possible? Yes, I did. Okay. Did they do that? We haven't, we haven't had a chance to reinspect to see if there's any activity. Uh, I did see an out-of-state vehicle parked in the driveway on uh, Friday or Saturday of this weekend during the Seafood Fest, but I didn't have the opportunity to speak with anybody. Okay. So just so that we're clear, I mean, there were no dates used um, by Aaron on the video. Can you tell us the actual dates that the uh, Airbnb tenant was in the property? So the, the inspection was done on January 3rd. I'm going to look at my calendar here. January 3rd and and the Friday before. Wouldn't your notes reflect that on page 15 yeah. as to um, the time and the name of the person? Yes. All right. And what are your notes? So Friday, about? December 29th through Saturday, December 5th. January 5th? Yes. Friday, December 29th through January, Saturday, January 5th. Okay. All right. Um, did you send this notice of violation by regular and certified mail? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you receive the green card back on this property? Mm, not that I'm aware of. All right. Did you then um, issue a statement of violation um, and request for hearing? Yes, uh, I did. Okay, and I'd refer you to page 14 and 15 of the packet. That is the statement of violation request for hearing that you had issued? Yes. For the same violations we mentioned earlier? That is correct. And when was that issued, the uh, date? Uh, January 11th, 2024. Okay. And did you also issue a notice of hearing for today's hearing? Yes, I did. And is that on pages 10 and 11 or 12 of the packet? Yes, it is. All right. Did you also um, send the notice of hearing and the statement of violation request for hearing by regular mail and certified mail? Yes, I did. And did you post the property? Yes, I did. Which property did you post? I posted 441 129th Avenue East. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to turn to page 13 of the packet. There's an affidavit of service there. Is this the document that reflects that you sent it by regular mail, certified mail, and you posted the property? Yes, it is. Okay. And when did you post the property? On the, the same day that it was uh, the 11th of January, 2024. Okay. Um, have you had contact with this uh, property owner before? Yes, I have. Okay. And can you tell me the, the history that you have with this property owner? Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Gabriel DeCandido, we had a uh, short-term rental violation on... My 
paperwork here. Page 16 and 17, I'd ask you to take a look there. There's my citation here. 16. It's page 16, a copy of the printout from the county uh, court misdemeanor division for a short-term rental less than six months. Yes. And that was in December of 2022. Here we go. Um, on page 21, there's a, a copy of a citation that I'd issued to Mr. DeCandido. Okay. And what was that for a violation of? That was uh, a violation for an R1 violation for another property that he owns uh, on at 530 Lillian Drive within the city. Okay, so that was uh, cited under section 110-176, which is different than the section that we're talking about today, correct? That is correct. And why is there a different code section that we're referring to today? Uh, R1, 110-176 refers to R1, which has a uh, a period, a minimum period of six month rental. Uh, R2 has a 90 day minimum rental period. Okay. So even though the property owner was aware of the short term rental issues here, or, or at least the code sections in Madeira Beach, this is a different zone property, so it's a different code section. That is correct. And did he pay the citation for the violation of the short term rental? Um, that you had mentioned, which was in September of 2022? That's correct. All right. And is that reflected in pages uh, 22 and 23, along with the citation, which is actually page 21 of the packet? Yes, it is. Okay. And did this property owner also come here to the special magistrate for a violation of the same code section? Yes, he did. All right. And I'd like you to turn to the special magistrate order that was entered on page 18 and 19 of the packet. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And was this for the property at 530 Lillian Drive as well? Yes, it was. Okay, so he's had two violations at 530 Lillian Drive that he's been found in violation of? That's correct. Um, and this is for another property that we're talking about today? Yes, it is. Okay. All right, and if I could ask you to turn to the last few pages in the packet. It appears that there are some photographs. If you could explain what the photographs to pick by page number. Uh, we have uh, copies of the mailings that were issued, certified mailings uh, of the, uh, the notice of hearing, actually all, all pages uh, that, are, that were mailed via certified mail. Um, we have a uh, copy of 441, a page of 441 with the uh, notice of hearing affixed to the front of the residence, a, a far away shot to show the property, and then one of a close up of the document. Okay. So, to bring this property into compliance, they would have to cease um, having a short term rental under three months at a time, correct? That's correct. And they, uh, and they would also have to get a business tax receipt if they were going to rent the property at all, correct? That's correct. Would they be required to have the registration for a short-term rental if they were um, attempting to do that, even though they wouldn't be allowed to do it? They wouldn't be allowed to rent the, the 90 days. They still are required to have the, the registration and the business tax in order to rent it for any length of time. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so as of this date, you don't know whether or not the property is in compliance? I do not. Okay. What do you think would be the appropriate period of time for the property owner to bring the property into compliance? Think seven days would be sufficient? Yes. Okay. And the dollar amount of the fine, should they fail to bring the property into compliance? At least 250 a day. And what's the reason that you believe that 250 a day would be appropriate? Uh, due to the fact that the, the the homeowner is aware that the city has a uh, zoned areas within the city that allow for minimum stays, R1 and R2, since he's already come to the special magistrate and been cited for it, and is aware that he's required to have a business tax prior to even renting out those properties. 
Okay, thank you. I have no other questions for you, Deputy. All right, go ahead and accept into evidence in the record exhibit number one, which will be pages three through 27 of the agenda package. I'll also accept into evidence as exhibit number two, the body cam footage that we were shown. Is there anyone here on behalf of the property owner, the respondents, anybody here on behalf of the property owner? All right, uh, would one of you like to come forward and I can tell you this is your opportunity to ask any questions of the deputy based upon his testimony. So would either of you like to come forward and ask any questions of the deputy? And sir, if the first thing you can do is just give me your name. Gabriel DeCondito. All right, Mr. DeCondito, I'm gonna give you a chance in just a few minutes to tell me anything you wanna tell me about this property or the violation, but this is your opportunity to cross-examine or ask questions of Deputy Snyder. Do you have any questions for Deputy Snyder? Uh, Deputy, how, how do you know that I know all of the uh, sub, uh, the areas uh, in this particular town that have particular limits on the duration of rental. How do you know that I know that, which is what you testified? The, the, the city, when you get a, a business tax to operate a rental unit, they're supposed to give you the, the, the duration of, of what, how you can rent it based on your zoned area. So on your business tax, it should say, and you have a business tax for 530 Lillian, so and it should tell you how long you can rent that property for. And, and you have had that property for numerous years, and we've had this discussion about length of time in the city. The city is zoned, has different areas, and you're aware that the city has different areas, and, eat, and, and there's minimum requirements for those areas. You're aware of that. I'm not aware of uh, each individual area, and I'm unaware of uh, the, the exact length of time for each particular area. The only area that I'm familiar with is Lillian because I had the hearing here uh, a year ago and uh, have been in compliance with that ever since. Since that time. Any other, other questions, hand, sir? I, oh, I would okay. object to the All statements right. being made. Any All other right. cross examination? Uh, and then, uh, how, uh, how do you know that I knew that I had to have a business uh, license in order to rent 441? You had a business license for 530 Lillian. For rental, mm -hmm. so you have it. That that's not necessarily the case. Uh, again, sir, this is yeah. your opportunity yeah, to ask him exactly. questions. I'm, I'm going to give you a full and complete opportunity I, to tell I me whatever it. you want to know. Sorry, it's uh, it's okay. Any other questions for Deputy Snyder? Uh, no. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, Stay close. I don't think you'll have to go far. Uh, Mr. Trask, you kind of call any other witnesses? I have no other witnesses on this case. All right, sir. Okay, sir, this is your opportunity in the hearing to tell me whatever you'd like to tell me. You can call any witnesses you'd like to call, and you can uh, provide me with any documents and evidence you'd like me to review. So, sir, go ahead and tell me what you'd like to tell me. Well, uh, to begin with, I am uh, elderly and retired and uh, have come into uh, <clears throat> the subject property for today, um, literally through the, uh, the, the encouragement and uh, uh, the push from the previous realtor that I had. With Lillian Drive, I got into trouble with the, uh, with the uh, realtor at that time, and I was not informed of all of the obligations that I had regarding uh, length of, uh, of stay uh, in the property. Uh, but having been compliant with that, uh, I, I continued to use the same realtor uh, to help me with the two new properties which he had induced me to uh, purchase out on uh, John's Pass. Uh, I was not informed by him, and I am not a real estate professional by, by trade. Uh, I was not informed by him that uh, there had to be uh, short-term rentals. 
uh, I, I had to be long-term rentals or at least uh, three-month rentals out on John's Pass, or I probably would not have uh, gone ahead and purchased uh, 441. As, uh, and it, it, was an in, it was an inducement by the previous realtor. In addition, uh, when the previous realtor started renting 441 for me, again, I'm retired. I'm not a real estate professional, and he went ahead and got involved with Airbnb and started doing short-term rentals through Airbnb. And things were going okay until I ran into some major uh, issues with the gentleman and wanted to release him from my from my. Uh, uh, for my use as a professional. He then decided to change the receiving bank facility uh, from Airbnb on the 441 property and take the receipts for himself and scammed me from that situation uh, to the tune of thousands of dollars. As an elder, I felt this was a form of elderly abuse. And I, in addition to the fact that he didn't even explain to me the importance of the short length of stay, I, 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 the, the particular length of stay that's allowed in that section of the town. I then went ahead and let him go. A friend of mine who I have worked with for years has introduced me to Mrs. Erickson uh, as a local realtor who has done this for 10, 12 years. And I went ahead and had her uh, take care of the rentals ever since. Unfortunately, she tried to get rid of the Airbnb rentals because of the length of stay situation, and Airbnb is almost impossible to get through to. I had tried it before when uh, the previous realtor started taking all the receipts. I tried to cancel the, uh, the uh, people coming, and it, and it continued on and on to the tune of thousands of dollars. And finally, it looks like they have pretty much come to a stop, but I asked the other, the new realtor, Mrs. Erickson, to try and help me delete Airbnb, get into compliance, and do what had to be done. And that's pretty much what she's been able to do. Um, I suspect that this last one uh, that we just heard from was uh, one of the residual Air Airbnbs that I was unable to cancel from the previous gentleman. Um, and she is also taking care of all the paperwork with the town and with compliance and with uh, the taxes, much, mo mo most of which was collected by Airbnb anyway, so there was no real loss of taxes. But uh, she is doing all that uh, needs to be done. And uh, again, I rely on the realtors. I ask them to do what has to be done. And she so far is taking care of me as far as I know related to this situation. But Airbnb is no one that is easy to work with. When I called them, I was talking to Southeast Asia, South America, uh, Africa, and uh, nobody knew anything about anything, and I could, I could cancel nothing, and I couldn't even get them to stop sending money to the other gentleman who I'd let go. So again, it's an elder abuse situation. I have uh, Mrs. Erickson, who I'd like to uh, talk with you further. Uh, but I, I beg of you that, uh, you know, it, it is not my desire to cheat the town. And I'm hoping that we can get things straightened out and I can continue with that. All right, sir. I think I fully understand all of your uh, statements and arguments. Mr. Trash, do you have any questions for Mr. Gabriel? I have a or for Mr. DeCandido. A few questions. 
Um, sir, you had mentioned that you're not a real estate person. That's true. Tell me how many properties that you own. How is that related to this? Well, it has to do with you being someone that, that understands real estate. I want to know how many properties that you own. Uh, I'd, probably 10. Okay. And that's seven of them. You have seven of them in Pinellas County, correct? Unknown caller. Yes, excuse me. I turned this thing off. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, seven in Pinellas County. Okay, so of the 10 properties that you own, how many properties are rentals? Most of them. Well, some are not rented at all. Um, I'm not asking if they're rented right now. I'm asking uh, whether or not they are um, properties that you rent. Right, all but one. Okay. And how are those properties managed other than the two that you've mentioned here that are being held, handled by Mrs. Erickson? I do not do Airbnb. I don't know how to do it. I'm unable to. I do long-term rentals with the other properties that are about a year or more in their duration. Okay. So I am un, un, unsophisticated in Airbnb A and B, B short-term rentals. All right. So how many properties do you have that you've used for short-term rentals, and how many are long-term? Um, let's see. So we have Lillian Drive. Well, that's going to be a, a six-month. That's going to be a six-month uh, rental or a year rental, so that won't be short-term. The only short-term will be uh, one on Lee Avenue, which is in Reddington Shores, um, and then 441 and 480 will go according to whatever the code and statute state, states. The others are all long-term or not rented at all. Okay, so... What and those two, excuse me, mm -hmm. I just... I just came into possession of those last two in the last six months, again, induced by the previous realtor. And the, the last two you're referring to are 441 129th Avenue East and 480 129th Avenue East. Correct. Okay. So you've heard the testimony of the deputy that, and you've seen the body camera video showing that your property at 441 129th Avenue East was rented by, through an Airbnb for, according to her, nine days. You don't dispute that, do you? I do not. Okay. Can you tell me how many units are in that um, property at 441 129th Avenue East? Three, that's what the deputy said. Well, that's what the deputy asked about. I'm asking you, how many well, are actually there? I'm, I'm agreeing to that. Okay. So, do you have a business tax receipt for this property? 441 129th Avenue East? Uh, Mrs. Erickson uh, has uh, worked on that for me. You don't have one as of today, though, do you? No. You don't, you don't have one as of today, do you? I'm deferring to Mrs. Erickson. Okay. And do you know whether or not that you've registered the property for rentals? Um, you know, and that's the registration requirement under Section 34503 of the city's code. Have you done that for this property? Again, deferred to Mrs. Erickson. So you as the property owner, you don't know the answer to those questions. That's true. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, sir, I don't have any questions for you. I, would you like to call any other witnesses or give me any other information? Yes, I, I'd like to call in Mrs. Erickson to explain what she's right, doing. All right, come on up. Me. Mrs. Erickson was sworn in. All right. Okay. And uh, ma'am, can you give me your first name and the proper spelling of your last name? Sure. Lisa Erickson, E-R-I-C-K-S-O-N. All right, Ms. Erickson, uh, what would you like to tell us about this uh, violation or these violations well i i can um verify that what he has said is true um he had a prior agent that did steal from him um took the money straight away from airbnbs um coerced the account 
Um, I called the broker of record for this particular agent and notified um, that broker of what was going on. Uh, that person is still employed, by the way, which could be doing harm also in Madera Beach. Um, so what he's saying is, is very, very accurate. Um, the Lillian Drive situation, from what I understand, was created also by this agent. You know, I think Mr. DeCandido has owned that property for quite some time as an annual rental, but this particular agent who stole from him was literally just putting people in there. And I can, I can testify to that when um, Mr. DeCandido asked me to take over these properties because he was referred to me by a prior client of mine. They were operating, or the guy that was handling it was kind of operating like a flop house. Is the best thing that I could say about it. Um, it just the things that you would see in there. I'm like, this is this is crazy. So what I can share with you is that as soon as that violation was issued, I came here straight away. I even spoke with um, this officer here, and I presented myself to understand what is on a file because I thought that the agent that had been handling this had done the proper protocol, applying for licenses and all the things that would be required, but that is not the case. I'm surprised to even hear that there's an, uh, uh, an operating license on Lillian, because I thought when I was here that day there was no operating license because I applied for one. And a lady from the Madeira Beach office called me and asked me about all the applications that had been made, and there was no mention that there was ever one on file for Lillian. So, in essence, I'm trying to get um, these properties on the right side of operational, um, sort of like excellence for the city, um, for Mr. DeCandido, because he's not able to do that. Um, I, can, I can definitely, from what I understand, the prior agent definitely told him that those were able to be short-term rented. So, I mean, he believed it. Um, and they were operating as such when he bought them. So it wasn't like he showed up on the scene and said, let me just, you know, change the use on this. So, you know, you can say he owns a lot of real estate. That's true. But he has a lot of annual rentals. He has land. He has commercial property. I mean, he's got a lot of different types of properties um, that don't require the, the sort of oversight that you'd see on a short-term basis. He trusted that other agent to kind of figure things out for him, and that really went south. Um, so I have all the things that we've applied for to this point. Um, I think they're still in application mode because we did it on the 11th as soon as we got that notice. Um, I don't have any confirmations yet that anything has been approved, um, but I, I know that it is in motion. I also apply with DPBR to get a full uh, licensing for 441, for example. Um, I think that's actually not even required from what I can understand because of his basis of renting on a longer-term basis on these that are going to move to, um, to comply. That's not a problem. So, but I figured, you know what, let's just go to the extra mile to get him fully compliant no matter what might happen, even if the zoning changed there for whatever reason. So if you have uh, an interest in those, I have those here if you want to admit those into evidence. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to have Mr. Trask ask you some questions. Sure. I, I'm not sure if something, and if before you want to introduce anything in evidence, you need to show it to Mr. Trask. So sure. let's start with his questions, and if there's something you'd like me to look at, show it to Mr. Trask, and I'll mm -hmm. take a look at it. That's fine. I don't think I have any questions. I think the question I would have had is, is have the applications been filed? You've responded, yes, they yes. have been. Um, and have they been approved? And you said... Not yet. Not yet. Not, okay. not from the city, no. Okay. Those to my knowledge. I mean, I... Mean, I I haven't received any information, and I don't know if Mr. DeCandido has gotten approval yet, but, but I've not been notified. All right. Those, would, those were my questions. Thanks. Ma'am, I do have just a couple questions. It sounds like the, certainly the violation that Deputy Snyder testified to, I don't think anybody disputes that that occurred. How much time do you think that Mr. Candido needs, DeCandido needs, to get both the local business tax receipt or permit, and also the vacation rental property registration? I don't, know, I don't know the answer to that question because I'm not sure the processes and the time it takes in the city of Madera Beach. So I, I'm not certain as to the length of time it is required. You guys could probably tell me more than, more than uh, me guessing because I'm not sure. All right. And ma'am, does he have any other short-term rentals that are scheduled for this property? Well, we just finally got control of Airbnb, so yes, and canceling out of those is quite challenging, I have to say, 
because Airbnb takes money and then they basically deposit the money after people come, but to get it unhinged, there's large cancellation fees for the client and or him. So that's that's a that's not a factor of like just saying, hey, we're we're out. Airbnb has people's money. How many more short-term rentals are scheduled for the property? You know, I, I don't know offhand. Um, they're coming into a season where longer stays are a little bit more prevalent. But I, I, I don't know. I'd be guessing maybe five. And how far out are we talking about? April, you know, because these are some of the longer stays that are happening now. So, you know, I, I don't know the exact answer, but there's some going into April. But I understand you don't want to let that, that reel out that long, nor do we. But that's just the reality for canceling out of Airbnb and taking back control from them. All right, Mr. Trafts, do you have any follow-up questions based on my questions? No, I don't. All right, thank you, um, Ms. Erickson. Appreciate uh, you. Sure. Is there anything you want to show, Mr. Trafts? Do you, do you want these documents that I have? No, ma'am, I don't need to see them. You've testified. Okay. Okay. You, you're, you were under oath, and you testified okay. to them. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, Mr. DeCandido, is there any other witnesses you'd like to call or any other evidence you'd like to present to me? All right, let the record reflect that Mr. DeCandido said no. All right, uh, this is the portion of the hearing. If there are any members of the public who have knowledge as to this particular code violation, you can come forward now and provide that information to me. So any members of the public that want to provide comment, please come forward. All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and close public comment. Mr. Trask, anything else you'd like to tell me? I'd just like to quickly summarize. So the city is asking for you to find the property in violation of section 110-201, which prohibits the short-term rentals. Um, there was obviously testimony and evidence that reflected it was a short-term rental for the nine days that Aaron from Airbnb had rented the property. Asking that you also find the property in violation of section 62-33 for the property owner failure to um, obtain a local business tax receipt. Although it's been applied for, it has not been received yet. And section 34-503 requiring the registration of the property, that has not been completed as of yet either. We're asking that you give the property owner seven days to come into compliance, and should they fail to bring the property into compliance within seven days, uh, issue a fine in the amount of $250 a day for each day that the violation continues to exist. All right, so Mr. Trask, I want to just make sure I've got this correct. So. Is the seven days and $250 a day fine for, in other words, they have to get the business tax receipt, get the uh, registration completed, and plus no more short-term rentals? Correct. And is the city seeking $250 a day for the nine days that it was? No, we are rented? not because it's not a repeat violation. Even though the notice reflected that, um, there are two different code sections. It's not appropriate to treat it as a repeat. It would it would be should be treated as an initial violation. And so, no, we're not looking for a fine to uh, hit for those rental dates already. If they do it in the future, seven days out or more, if you grant if grant the seven days, that's when we believe that the fine would be appropriate. Understood. And. Do we know, and Ms. Trask, if you don't or you need to ask somebody else or confer, that's fine. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Is, it sounds like the application's in process. Is that done by the City of Madeira Breach? Is that Pinellas County? Who, who processes those licenses or it, those it, applications? I'm sorry. The City of Madeira Beach does that. And as for the timing of it, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking over to Marcy or to Joe if that's their department. Do you have any idea how long it would take normally to do that? I don't know for sure. I can get with Lisa after this, though. Okay. She processes them. Joe, do you know? No? No, I'll check with Lisa after this. Corey, right. you wouldn't have to know, would you? I don't think it takes more than a week to process a business business application, provided they they show all the, the, the relevant documents. The scheduling of the, uh, uh, the inspection um, could come later, in my experience, as long as they've obtained this, the city business tax. It's something that will be added to the, another, the civilian code enforcement or building inspector to, con to conduct the, the inspection later. So once he, it, it shouldn't take more than a week to obtain a business tax. Thank you. 
Okay, I just didn't want to create a in my, situation. In my experience. No, that, and that's fine. And, and I'm, I just don't want to create a situation where I rule on a, a deadline, but then the city can't meet that, and so the owner's in violation because the city needs more time to process the application. That's, that's my concern. But if, if, we, if the city has good faith belief that that can be done within a week, that's fine. If, if it's 10 days, tell me that. I just want to make sure I'm not setting the owner up for failure here. The deputy was just telling me that the applications were filed on the 11th, the, the, the violations were filed on the 11th. and they also filed the application. That was the testimony of Mrs. Erickson um, that I wrote down that she testified that the application were filed on January 11th and we're already at January 20th. Um, so they were, they're pretty far along the process in the process. So, okay. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, Mr. DeCandido, based upon the testimony that's been provided in, in your admissions, I'm going to go ahead and find the property has is in violation for the short-term rental violation. Also, uh, find the property is in violation for the failure to have the business tax receipt and also have the registration for the vacation rental property. So I'm going to order that the property be brought into compliance within seven days, and that's specifically complying with code section 62-33 and 34-503. In regard to the fine, if the property is not brought into compliance within seven days, then there'll be a $250 a day fine that runs. Uh, sir, I don't know what's going to happen about your futures. I can only de uh, make decisions on what is before me here today. But if the city goes out and you have short-term renters there, they may be back before me. And I just warn you that that could be up to a $500 a day fine. So you need to be careful about that. Uh, Mr. DeCandido, Ms. Erickson, I retain jurisdiction of these matters after I enter an order. If there's some issue with issuing these two licenses and you can show me uh, some that you've been going through and trying to get compliance, but just because of some external factor you can't get compliance, then you can go through a process to try to have that fine reduced and come back before me on that. But it sounds like the city is going to try to process this as soon as it can. So. I'll find that seven days is good for all three of those violations and $250 fine, uh, $250 a day fine if it's not, property's not brought into compliance. All right, that concludes the code enforcement portion of the agenda. Is that correct, Mr. Trask? It is correct. The, uh, the case that was scheduled, uh, the 590 Normandy Road, the property owner has contacted the city over the weekend and advised that there was some type of emergency and they requested it be continued. He has been notified that his case will be continued to February 26th. So that's the end of the code enforcement cases. We're ready to proceed with the variance case though when you're ready. All right. Welcome to the city of Madeira Beach. Variant special exception use special magistrate hearing. Again, my name is Bart Valdez. I'm the appointed special magistrate to hear today's cases. I'm a practicing attorney and have been a member of the Florida Bar for over 20 years. I've been appointed to this position in accordance and with the authority set forth under Florida law and the City of Madeira Beach Code of Ordinances. It is my role to fairly and objectively review the matters presented today in these variance requests. As such, I would like to advise you of certain matters related to today's proceedings. Today's matters will be heard in the order that they appear on the agenda. At this time, I have read and reviewed the applications with all attachments, any written submissions by anyone having an interest, any timely submitted written objections, and the materials provided by the city staff. In all cases, the hearing will be conducted in the following order. We'll go ahead and make sure notice is proper. The city will present its case and staff report, and the applicant may ask questions of the city's representative. The applicant will present his or her case supported by witnesses and evidence, and the city may cross-examine each witness. We will then have public comment, which will be solicited or received from parties directly affected by the variance. Please note that individuals testifying do not have the right to cross-examine the parties. All public comment shall be limited to three minutes per person. Public participation will then be closed. I will deliberate and then make a decision to grant or deny each variance requested in the application. Formal rules of evidence do not apply to these proceedings. However, I will exert every effort to ensure that fundamental fairness is afforded to all parties. After my decision today, I will issue an order. The order will be reduced to writing and you will be provided with a copy by mail. Therefore, please make sure that we have your current address. Additionally, you are advised that I do not have the authority to grant you a building permit. You must still obtain a building permit for any work you intend to do on your property. 
Again, if you wish to present any information to me today, it is necessary that you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth. Therefore, in just a moment, the city attorney will administer the oath and swear in any witnesses. If you expect to talk to me today during the hearing on your variance, then you will need to rise and be sworn. This includes any members of the public who are directly affected by the variance and may wish to provide public comment. Is there anyone who's come in that was not previously sworn? Okay, seeing none, I will go ahead and every witness has been sworn. So with that, uh, we will go and move on to VAR 2024-01 for the property located at 105 147th Avenue. Is the city ready to proceed? We are. Go ahead, Mr. Trask. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the witness that we'll be uh, having speak on this matter today is Joe Petraglia. Joe, if you could please uh, state your name and your job responsibilities here at the city and how long that you've been with the city. Yep. Uh, my name is Joseph Petraglia. I've been with the city since June 2023, so about eight months. Uh, my primary responsibility is reviewing permit applications for the planning and zoning. Are you familiar with the variance application for the property located at 105 147th Avenue East here in Madeira Beach? Yes, I am. Um, did you review that application yourself? Yes. Okay. And did you complete the staff report and recommendation on the variance? Yes. Okay. In the packet, there is a, a, a lot of information, pages 50 through, it looks like 77. Um, or, is this the packet? Um, uh, 50 79. 79. Yeah, okay. Yes. So this entire packet, um, you were the one that created this packet? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. If you would go ahead then and go through your staff report and recommendation, and maybe if you would also go through the remainder of the packet to explain what's there. Yep. Okay. All right. So the, I'll start with the staff report, which is the pages 50 through 52. Uh, special magistrate meeting, January 22nd, 2024. Application VAR 2024-01. Applicant Branda Flores Fernandez. Property owners Brenda Fernandez and Robert Raman. Property address 105 147th Avenue, East Madeira Beach, Florida 33708. Parcel ID 09-31-15-8704-8-000-0370. Legal description Sunny Shores Lot 37. Zoning and future land use. R2 low density multifamily residential slash residential medium. And the request is conversion of a non conforming garage to use as an occupied space. Specific code provisions would be section 110 93 3A that any addition, altercation, or renovation to the structure shall not increase the degree of non conformity or result in the conversion of a non conforming carport, garage, screen enclosure, patio, roof storage area or other non-habitable area into habitable area unless specifically approved by the special magistrate. One, background. This structure, this structure is a single family home constructed on approximately 3,000 square foot lot. The minimum building area for a single family home in R2 zoning district is 4,000 square feet, which is in section 110-205-1A. Additionally, the garage for this structure planned to be converted into living space is set back 15.6 feet from the property line as opposed to the required 20 feet, which is stated in section 110-206-1, and is set back 6.4 feet from the side, making the total side setbacks for the full structure 12.4 feet as opposed to the required 15 feet with a minimum of seven on each side, which is stated in section 110-206-3b. This structure was built in 1963 before the creation of the Madeira Beach Land Development Regulations, which contains minimum site area and setback requirements, making the structure legally nonconforming. The proposed conversion will allow for reconfiguring the existing garage into an additional bedroom and bathroom. This proposed conversion will be constructed in the west corner and will not increase the encroachment of the structure into the setbacks. Two variance criteria and analysis. In consideration of granting a section 110-93 authorized variance for a conversion of a specific portion of the structure for occupied use, the special magistrate shall find that such grant will not adversely affect the public interest. In granting any unauthorized variance, the special magistrate may, pres may prescribe 
appropriate conditions and safeguard in conformity with the land development regulations. Violations of such conditions and safeguards when made a part of the terms under which the variance is granted shall be deemed a violation of the land development regulations. The variance shall apply to the existing structure addressed in the application and cannot be applied to any sub subsequent series, a subsequent structure on this or any other lot now or in the future. Such uses shall be found by the special magistrate to comply with the following requirements and other applicable requirements. One, that the use is a permitted use. Yes, the space will be used for residential use only. Two, that the converted er conversion area is so designed, located, and proposed to be operated that the public health, safety, welfare, convenience will be protected. Yes, the converted space will be up to code with all necessary inspections. No major changes will be done on the structure of the house, causing no harm to public safety. Three, that the converted area will not cause substantial injury to the value of other property in the neighborhood where it is to be located. The converted area will not cause substantial injury to the value of the properties or to the value of other properties in the area. Four, that the structure with converted area will be compatible with adjoining development and the proposed character of the district where it is to be located. The exterior of the property will not be affected by the conversion and the use of the structure will not be changing. The conversion will be within the existing footprint of the structure. Five, that adequate landscaping and screening is provided as required in the land development regulations mitigate anticipated impact upon adjoining property. Landscaping will not be affected by the conversion. Additionally, this property is already under the maximum allowable ISR impervious surface ratio requirements. Six, that the minimum off-street parking to meet code requirements remains after, con after the conversion. The property has three off-street parking spaces to remain, which exceeds the city requirement of two parking spaces per dwelling unit as stated in section 110-971. Seven, that the use conforms to all applicable regulations governing the district where located, except uh, as may otherwise be spe specified in this variance. Yes, this is an existing space that will be converted into living space, and it conforms to all applicable regulations governing the districts where located, except for the minimum land area for a single family home, as well as the setbacks as specified in this variance. The proposed variance would not increase the encroachment of the structure into the setbacks. Eight, the conversion of use to the specified area would not grant the, to the lands more privilege than the best use available in a zone where that special exception use would be a principal permitted use. The conversion of the spe specified area will not grant any special privilege to the land. Nine, no application for a variance use shall be considered by the special magistrate until the applicant has paid in full any outstanding charges, fees, interest, fines, or penalties owed to the city by the applicant or the owner or possessor of the property under any section of the code. All outstanding charges and fees have been paid to the city. Three, staff recommendation. Staff recommends the approval of this variance, um, and this was submitted by me, Joseph Petraglia. And we have included the application, survey of the property, and proposed floor plan of the conversion and public notice and mailing a posting. Um, so the staff memo is pages 50 through 52, which I just read. Uh, and then pages 53 to 65 is the application. Page 59 is the survey of the property, the boundary survey. Page 60 to 63 is the site plans of the converted space. Page 66 is the public notice. 67 is the notice of intent to be an affected party. Uh, page 68 is the affidavit of mailing. Page 69 through 75 are the mailing labels. 
page 60, 76 is the affidavit of posting, and pages 77 through 79 are the posting pictures. Mm -hmm. One additional question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Has the city received any um, correspondence or telephone calls relative to this variance application, either for or against? Neither for nor against. Okay. The city did not receive any notices of intent to be an infected party either, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions for you. Um, I would tender into evidence uh, pages 50 through 79 of the packet. All right. Go ahead and accept into evidence in the record exhibit number one, which will be pages 50 through 79 of the packet. All right. Is anyone here on behalf of the applicant or property owner? All right. Come on forward. Ma'am, what is your name? My name is Brenda Fernandez. All right. Uh, Ms. Fernandez, you heard the city said they're recommending approval of this variance. Mm -hmm. uh, this is your opportunity to cross-examine Mr. Petraglia, in other words, to ask him any questions. Since he's uh, you know, recommending that I approve yeah. this, I don't know if you need to ask him any questions. But if you want to, you're certainly, uh, you have that opportunity. And then I'm going to give you a moment after this to tell me anything else you want to tell me. But do you have any questions for the witness? No, I don't. All right, don't go far. You might be coming right back up. Uh, anybody else, Mr. Trask? City has no other witnesses on this application. All right. Uh, Ms. Fernandez, I don't have any questions. It seems pretty straightforward to me, but is there anything else that you would like to tell me about the variance application you submitted? Pretty much, uh, as a lot of people that come to the city, we, we get mislead by real estate agents, and this was the case for me as well. When we bought the house, we knew that the square footage was kind of small, but we knew I'm in the construction industry. I'm a project manager, and my husband is a um, GC. So for us, it was a, a easy, oh, we can add to the square footage of the house with the existing garage. And, and, and it, was, it was simple because we had to do a whole renovation to the entire house, so it was not going to add much more to our budget. Um, we have a daughter and we work from home, so the space was essential for us until we had a meeting with um, a person from the city and then we walked the house and we, you know, brought that to his attention and asked him, you know, what's the process? Is it a different permit? And then he, he was like, it's more difficult than that. And he explained to us the whole process. And I just want to say this is really, we want to work that this, we live in Orlando right now, but we're moving to this area for the school, really good school system for, for my daughter and future kids. So this space will be really, really valuable for my family due that we work from home and we only have one bathroom right now, which we're like struggling when we come and do renovations because our daughter is taking a shower, someone else needs to use the bathroom, especially the bathroom, it's like a big deal for us. And we cannot use the existing garage at the moment because our cars are too big for the garage. The garage is pretty small and we have an existing laundry that takes a lot from the pretty much the square footage of the garage. So as said now it's just like an empty space that we cannot even use to put our cars inside. So it would be like the best use for my family and again it would not add anything. The exterior is going to look pretty much the same. Um, so yeah it will help us, me and my family, greatly if this gets approved. Mr. Trask, any questions for Ms. Fernandez? No, no questions for Ms. Fernandez. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, that's all I need from you right now. Are there any members of the public that would like to comment on this variance request? Any members of the public? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and end public comment. Mr. Trask, anything else on this one before I rule? Staff recommends approval. All right, I find that the application has met all of the requirements under the city ordinances, and so I'm going to go ahead and approve the variance. Uh, Ms. Fernandez will go ahead and email you a copy of my order. It'll be entered in just the next couple days. Anything else before me today, Mr. Trask? No, sir. Thank you. All right, that concludes today's hearings. Everyone have a nice day.